Randy Robinson here. Welcome to Live Today, special digital edition. I'm here with Anna LeBaron. Uh, and if you're of a certain age in the United States, you, you might have heard that name LeBaron. It was associated for years with uh, a cult, uh, with Herbal LeBaron, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a long story. Anna tells her part of the story in the Polygamous Daughter book. It's out right now, available. You can go get it. Thank you, Anna, so much for being with us. Thank you. I appreciate being here. I, I, you know, if people want to hear the whole story, I, I would suggest they just go get the book. Give us kind of a short version so we at least know kind of where you're coming from. There, I know there's no short version, but give us this. <laughs> That's this, the reason I had to write a book. Yeah, I know, I know. So, <laughs> can this, because I want to talk more about you and not not all about your past, which is so, uh, it's just hard to believe and, and a mess and, mm -hmm. and shocking and all those things. Right. But, so, so. Give, give us at least a, a base here so we can know where you're coming from. Okay. I was born in and raised in a violent polygamist cult. Mm. My father was the leader. He had 13 wives and 50 children. Unbelievable. What, what, I was curious. What Do you know what you are out of those 50? I don't know where I'm at in the 50. My mother had 12 children. I'm number 12. No, I'm number 10 of her 12 kids. 10 of the 12 of hers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it puts you on the tail end yes. overall, though, because I know that... Very much the tail end. Some of the other ones were older. I do have younger siblings. I know that. Okay. So not quite, but the tail end of my mother's and my father's. We can just say it that okay. way. <laughs> okay. Do you know all 50 of them? I know all except two. Oh, all right, I'd... so I'm sorry. Continue. So, yes. My father um, believed in a practice called blood atonement, which means that the blood of Christ doesn't cover all sins. And some sins you have to atone for with your own blood. Mm. So he would order hits on people that had committed um, crimes against whatever. Yeah, so what would be a crime worth it? Leaving hit? his cult. Leaving the cult, yeah. Yeah, um, and the people that were um, committing the hits, if they threatened to leave, then they had information so he would order a hit on them if they left, and it was just, it became a real mess, a bloody mess. How many, how many murders have been attributed to? 28 confirmed, okay. and up to 38, if, depending on which investigator you talk to. Yeah. So my father was known as the Mormon Manson mm. because of his belief in the fundamentalist Mormon uh, religion mm -hmm. that was founded by Joseph Smith. Right. But... So you, we can. They were kicked out of the Mormon Church, though, right? Yes. Because we don't want to associate them with right, today's Mormon the Church. Right. The LDS Church um, disavowed polygamy in 1890. Right. And so they are the modern day uh, practice of mm -hmm. the faith. And then my father and other people that continued practicing polygamy were known as fundamentalist Mormons. Okay. okay. So they were an offshoot. You an got extreme out, offshoot. Uh, it, yeah, obviously. You got out when you were 13 years old? Mm -hmm. How did you. How did you run, literally? <laughs> literally, how did you get out? Yes. I had an older sister that um, her and her husband were, um, they had a life and a business in Houston, which is where we lived at the time. And when my mom decided that she wanted to go back to Denver, long story, you read about in the book. Yeah. <laughs> long story. But my mom decided to go back to Denver, where he had li been living prior to Houston. And in Denver, we were living in complete squalor. And we were basically child slaves. And I didn't want to go back to Denver. The life that we had in Houston with my sister and her brother-in-law leading and, you know, that with their business there yeah. was so much better. And I was 13 and could see the difference. Mm -hmm. and, and so I called they, my sister. Were they still involved in the, the Church of the Lamb of God? Is yeah, that right? they were still involved, but they were hedging towards the edges. Okay. And they were on the fringe. Okay. So I called my sister, told her I didn't want to go to Denver. She said, start walking. You literally walked away. So I walked out of my house. How long until you were free from the fear of being taken back as a child into all that? Did you just spend the next five years until you were legally 18 hiding? No, I lived with my sister and my brother-in-law. Okay. I consider them the heroes of my story. Okay. And... Um, we, I did live in fear of being sent back to Denver. Yeah. Um, others of my family, you know, different things had happened, which made that fear a real, a real thing that I needed to fear. And so I was able to um, graduate from a Christian school that they enrolled me in. That's where I came to know Christ. Okay. 
Interesting. Okay, I have some. Uh, let, we'll, we'll put a cap <laughs> on some of the story here, but I want to ask about that because, so so Herbal LeBaron, whom you really didn't know very well. I didn't correct? know him. I I was in the same room as him twice. Wow. That I remember. He was arrested in 78? 79. 79, mm -hmm. died in prison a couple years later? 1981. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then, <laughs> but the, the violence and the fear kept going? Kept, kept the, on. Right. He had, he had left um, a list of people that had betrayed him when he was in prison. And within, you know, af after five or six years later, after he passed, the, the violence continued. Well, the violence continued after he passed. I was just unaware of it. Mm because it was happening outside of the Houston group that I was part of. Okay. But then it really hit close to home. Um, with the four o'clock murders. With the four o'clock murders that happened the four murders. in 1988. 88. Has there been any since then that you know of? No. Okay, so. So that was the end. That was, okay. But so we didn't know it was the end for a long time. Sure. So <laughs> you can basically say that I've lived my life in fears from the time I was three years old, because mm -hmm. that's when my dad ordered the first hit. Mm. You don't look over your shoulder anymore, do you? No, I don't. I, if I was in any fear of that, I couldn't have written the book. Yeah, okay. So, and there's been other books written. There have been a thing. whole stack of books written about my family. <laughs> <laughs> mm, and so. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, given that crazy, crazy oh. background and life and story and situation, how did you ever want anything to do with religion again? <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> when my sister and brother-in-law enrolled me in the Christian school, and there's a story behind that too, the reason why. The teachers were given some of my background. Mm -hmm. And so naturally, they were extra kind, extra caring, compassionate, and very tender with me. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had ever experienced that. Hmm. And so... When the opportunity came for me to receive Christ, I was very open mm. to that because just being loved felt so good. Mm. And knowing that the difference that Jesus made in their life made Jesus very attractive to me. Uh, a lot of people, especially outside the church, outside of Christianity, would equate one religion with another religion. You know, you know that there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? Outside of the compassion of Christians, what do you, what, what kind of, what do you bear in your spirit is is the difference between Christianity and religion, so you know, organized religion, mm -hmm. cults, right. that kind of thing. What what separates it? Well, if you look at the fruit hmm. of what's happening. And if love, joy, and peace, and patience, and kindness are not the hallmarks of the fruit of what's happening, mm -hmm. that's um, a red flag to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, the, the things that I was experiencing, love, joy, and peace, were attractive. Yeah. And so I, I call myself, I'm a student of the historical man Jesus, mm -hmm. because I want my life to be characterized by love, joy, and peace hmm. for the, peop the interactions that people have with me, for that to be what they experience. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that is what makes Jesus more attractive to anyone. Yeah, absolutely. How long has it taken you to not have nightmares or not, yeah, you know, I mean, it, there's so much you went through, and again, right. get the book to, re to read all of it, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, have you, have you counseling? I, uh, I started professional counseling in 1995, and I talk about that. Yeah. What that journey was like for me. It wasn't until 95. Yeah, I was a grown woman with kids of my own when some events happened that led to a very terrifying nightmare mm. that I had. And the next day I was telling a friend, and this friend said, if I make you an appointment with the, you know, the lay ministry counselor at my church, will you go? Mm. What did that do for you? I went and talked to her, and after an hour of just really sharing my heart of what the nightmare was and why it, why it was there and mm -hmm. the, the events that had preceded that nightmare, um, she uh, ref, you know, referred me to a professional counselor, mm -hmm. and I began seeing a counselor 
and for five years spent unpacking the reality of my childhood. Yeah. And she called it peeling back the layers of an onion. Right. When I got to the core of that onion, what was there was a little girl yeah. that just wanted a daddy. Mm. And that experience of being able to grieve what should have been and was not yeah. um, allowed so much healing to take place Good. in my heart. And then following that, in 2005, I moved to Dallas and began attending Gateway Church. Okay. And began attending Freedom Ministry. Mm. And from there, it's it's been 12 years now. Do you feel whole again, or maybe whole for the first time? Yes. Right. And and I've continued um, professional counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I was just recently ta talking to my counselor in 2014, in January of 2014, mm -hmm. talking to a counselor that I'd been seeing for about a year. Mm -hmm. And um, she said that what I was experiencing was anxiety triggered by post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And when she said that, at first I was confused because I've always attributed post-traumatic stress to soldiers that sure. go off to war and sure. see people die. And then when I thought that, I went, oh, wait. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that makes so much sense. Mm. And so with her help and with the help of Dr. Caroline Leaf's book, yeah. Switch on Your Brain, oh, yeah. she says post-traumatic stress can be healed. So I pressed in and read that book, um, applied what she talked about, how you can transform the mind, yeah. how you can go through this process. She has a little app mm -hmm. that, yeah. I, that yeah. I did yeah. that faithfully. Mm. And so many things changed for me from just um, taking this, what she said, and believing it. Yeah. And, and really transforming my mind. You know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. You know, and she says you can grow new neurological pathways. Yeah. And when you're experiencing trauma, that's the time to apply what she's given you. Yeah. So when I mean, you're triggered. So I began doing that. Interesting. And so much has changed for me. Working for you. Yes. Now, I say the healing journey that I've been on, the freedom, freedom journey that I've been mm -hmm. on, has been a, a long process. Yeah, sure. And it's, it's taken me pressing in and really having what I call a Jacob's Ladder moment with God. Wrestling. Back in 2005, the first time I attended Freedom Ministry and mm -hmm. went to the Levels of Change class taught by Bob Hamp. Yeah. And I said, if this is all about my identity, in Christ, knowing who I am in Christ, then I'm going to camp out right here, <laughs> and I will not let go until you bless me. Mm. And this process, you know, you leave with a little bookmark when you go to there, and it says, I am loved, I am secure, I am significant in his kingdom. And I knew those things in my head, but I kept repeating them, kept repeating them, kept repeating them, mm. until years later. Mm it finally became real to me. Wow. And I found myself that part of that little girl that longed for a daddy found my heavenly father, Good. his love for me, Good. and really knew that I was a daughter. Mm, so true, so, and very encouraging. Um, can you tell us the website for your book? Yes, um, AnnaLamarin.com, okay. and it tells where it's all available. It's, it's available everywhere, yeah, sure. even Walmart.com. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. So. Do check out The Polygamous Daughter, and if you want to hear more of Anna's story, you can see her on the broadcast show of Life Today. That's available right now at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.